وسلم ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار إخواني حياكم الله As I just said to you guys Alhamdulillah um, I appreciate the advice that you guys have given um, and inshallah whoever advised me and the things that you advised me with they make it into the book then inshallah you will have that reward as well um, and whoever benefits from it, then bi'idhnillah, he tabarak wa ta'ala, you will um, also share in that reward, insha'Allah. Um, now, because you guys were just firing questions at me, more than suggestions, there was more than there were more questions than there were suggestions. So, um, insha'Allah, I'll take some time out to answer some of you your questions. And I don't want you to be upset if I refer you back to my website because. Um, the last thing that I want to do is sp spend uh, 20 minutes explaining something to you when there might be another question um, which hasn't been answered and your question is on my website clear as day for you to you know go and watch and research in your own time okay so for anybody who doesn't know my website is rukya r-u-q-y-a hyphen q-a dot co dot uk okay so if anybody has any questions now then um, please uh, fire away um, but at the same time I'm going to also make it clear that if somebody's going to come um, and you know from the crew who believe that jinn possession is just uh, fairy tales and that type of thing then I'm not here to entertain you either barakallahu feekum this is for people who have genuine questions um, and they're not here to challenge me I don't have time uh, to waste with regards to that okay um, so with regards to the one who bought the throne of Bilqis, then what is mentioned by Ibn Kathir rahimahullah, is weak. The scholars of Hadith, when they have looked at the chains of narration, they have stated that it wasn't a, uh, it wasn't uh, an Ifrit. It wasn't the Ifrit. It was a man whom Allah subhanahu wa taala had given knowledge of, and he called upon Allah subhanahu wa taala by his greatest of names. And as a result of that, the throne of Bilqis came. At the end of the day, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. How does that benefit us here, right now? The reality is, it doesn't. Okay? So, um, let's, um, let's, um, barakallahu feekum, let's deal with the situations that are, um, that are beneficial, um, that we think that, you know, one another, these are issues that we could um, benefit from. So if you guys have any questions, then um, please go ahead um, and inshallah, I'll do my best to answer them. And if I don't know, then I will tell you uh, as much. Okay, so we'll deal with the first question. Do jinn help humans in some ways? Um, in reality, they might. They might. Okay, but it's really important that we don't seek the assistance of the jinn. Okay, so it's not permissible to seek the help of the jinn. If, however, there are righteous jinn and they want to assist you of their own accord, let's say something happens and they want to assist you and you haven't sought that assistance, 
This is not upon you. You didn't ask for it. You didn't want it. You, you know, that was nothing to do with you. If they came and they did that, then that is between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, however, people come now and they actively seek the assistance of the jinn. Okay, so there is uh, no problem uh, if they do that on their own back. As for, um, as for doing anything else, then that is not permissible. Okay. Um, Sister Shireen asks, is constantly dreaming of flying as if you're a bird uh, always a si uh, is that a sign of sihr or jinn possession? The reality is I don't know. Okay, I don't know with regards to um, dream interpretation. Um, what I would do is if you're worried about it, then make rukya. Okay, because if you are possessed, the answer is rukya. And if you're not possessed, then you're just reciting from the book of Allah and you're going to get 10 good deeds for every letter that you recite. Sister Saira asks, I'm not well. All of my medical reports say they are normal, but something or the other is wrong with me. So we have called a Raqi to heal me. Is it okay? My advice to you, okay, as Ibrahim alayhi salam said, وَإِذَا مَرِضْتُ فَهُوَ يَشْفِينَ When I become ill, it is Allah who gives me the shifa. So as you say there, and I know what you mean, you've said, we've called the Raqi to heal me. You need to know, وَإِنْ يَمْسَسْكَ اللَّهُ بِضُرٍ فَلَا كَاشِفَ لَهُ إِلَّا هُ That if Allah should touch you with some harm, none can remove it except for Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? So, I know what you mean, the Raqi is going to recite, but you need to make sure that you believe that the Raqi is just a means. Okay? And the second thing is, if you yourself have the ability to recite, then you should be making the Ruqya. If you yourself have the ability to recite, then you yourself should be making Ruqya. Um, Brother Cameron asks, I have seen some Muslims performing Ruqya on non-Muslims. Is this permissible? Yes. Not only is it permissible, it's one of the greatest forms of giving da'wah. Okay? Because when that non-Muslim sees and feels the book of Allah sees and, 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 and feels the effects of the book of Allah, then in that situation, you are going to uh, be in a position to give excellent da'wah to that person. Okay? Um, can Qareen jinn harm us inside our own body? So the jinn who is with us, does he have the ability to harm us? I don't know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And um, I don't know. I don't know. My earning is blocked by black magic. How can I unblock or break black magic? And the answer is by making Rukya. Go over to my website, follow the Rukya plan. Okay. Should you do Rukya if you have OCD? Okay. So, um, brothers and sisters, um, just as I'm going through the questions, you can see, inshallah, that I'm about five or six questions up. So, don't keep adding them in, inshallah, until we deal with those which um, are prior to yours. Okay, should you do Rukya with OCD? Okay, now look, OCD doesn't just start overnight. This is what you need to understand. Okay, people always say OCD, OCD, and I'm like, right, okay, what's the situation? They say, brother, you don't know that the thoughts are almost compelling and I just don't have, and you know, OCD doesn't begin overnight. You don't get OCD overnight. OCD is something which develops because you yourself paid attention to it. And OCD is nothing but whisperings from the shaitan, which a person, he takes, uh, he takes notice of. And as a result of that, the shaitan increases in those whisperings until what? Until a person now is spending hours in the toilet because he thinks he's not making wudu properly. Or he's taking an hour to pray four rakahs of uh, rakaat of dhuhr because he constantly is forget he's constantly forgetting the the cure for ocd is number 1 seeking refuge with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala number 2 the thing that you have ocd in you need to seek knowledge of the book of allah and the sunnah of the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam so for example now a person he is always washing his hands because he thinks his hands are dirty what is dirt, subhanAllah? Do you smell something? Can you see the filth? No khalas. Now, are you then going to pull out a magnifying glass? Are you then going to pull out your microscope and start looking at the germs? Ikhwani, this is nothing but whispering from the shaitan. And because you yourself took, uh, took heed of it, it got worse and worse and worse. The best thing, the best thing that you can do with OCD is to ignore it, is to seek knowledge. So a person has OCD now. 
For example, okay, he, he's got this waswasa from the shaitan. He goes and he uses the toilet. And when he leaves the toilet, he feels some wetness in his underwear. Such that we get people walk around for half an hour. They walk around for half an hour, then they go back to the toilet, then they wash themselves again. This is ridiculous. This is ghulu. This is going overboard and exaggerating in the religion. Okay, all you needed to do was just take some water and sprinkle it on your underwear. Then when you feel wetness, you tell yourself, although you don't believe it, you tell yourself that this wetness that I am feeling is from the water that I myself have sprinkled onto my underwear. Khalas. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Allah will not burden a soul with more than it can handle. خلاص. There's your issue of the wetness and you know a drip of urine came out after I used the toilet. There's that issue gone. What about the issue of what? The issue of I'm not sure. Am I in the second rakah of my prayer or am I in the third? Learn about the prostrations of forgetfulness. This is not the right place to go through the different prostrations of forgetfulness. What times? Before the taslim, after? No. But go and learn. Because all you need to do is, am I on number two or am I on number three? I'm not sure. Take the lesser of the two and then you need to go and do the prostrations of forgetfulness. Khalas, there's your issue ended. You don't need to break your prayer and restart and restart and restart. No. You just pray those four rakahs and if it's less, as the Prophet ﷺ said, if you if you took the right number, khalas, you've done it. If you did if you did more, then those extra prostrations that you did are a humiliation for the shaitan. The point that I'm trying to get to you, Ikhwani, is that learning the sunnah, learning the sunnah blocks off and it closes the door to OCDs. OCD. Okay. The next brother asks, someone has told me good jinns who he gained their trust to take bad jinns out. That doesn't sound right. I've mentioned seeking the assistance of jinn. How do you know he's a good jinn? Have you seen him? Have you got a tazkiyah from him? Allah says, In bin If an evildoer comes to you with some news, then seek clarification. This is from a person. What about the one who you don't even see him? What about the one who you don't even know who he is? Maybe a shaitan playing tricks on you. Okay? Um... Is it true that when the when the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had black magic done on him, he found the magic but he didn't destroy it because he wanted to leave it? Okay? There are various narrations concerning this, and the Prophet Alayhi Salam told Aisha radiallahu anha that the magic was located in the well of the Rwan. The well of the Rwan. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cured the Messenger of Allah by virtue of what? His dua. Okay, the Messenger of Allah was cured by virtue of his dua. Okay, so it wasn't necessary for the um, magic to be destroyed. The Prophet ﷺ made dua, and this is a lesson for us that when we are suffering from magic or jinn possession or evil eye, so many of us we say, Oh, all I can do is make dua, as if dua is something small, as if dua is something insignificant. In reality, mm -hmm. your biggest weapon is the dua. Okay, so make dua. Would anyone ever react or cry to verses of the Quran, especially verses of punishment, without being afflicted? I think you said inflicted, but I think what you mean is afflicted. Okay, so a person who understands the book of Allah, a person who knows the Arabic language, uh, you know, uh, like when Allah says, Okay, on the day when uh, we say to Jahannam in Surah, Al Surah Qaf, I've forgotten the ayah, um, when Allah says to the Halfai, are you full? And the Halfai says, Hal min mazid? is there any more? So imagine a person thinking now, subhanAllah, this is how full the Halfai is going to get. Seize them and fetch them and throws them, throw them into the fire, etc. So if a person understands these ayat and he is you know, crying and that type of thing, there's absolutely nothing wrong. Or you're crying, you're reflecting upon your sins, the greatness of Allah, etc. There's nothing wrong. But if it's always specific ayat which are making you cry, always maybe the ayat of sihr or whatever it is, then, uh, you know, uh, make ruqya upon yourself. Okay? Do jinn speak different? I'm going to skip some questions because they are a bit long. Okay. Do jinn speak different languages? Can an English speaking jinn possess someone who can't speak English? Yes, of course. Jinn speak uh, English languages. 
uh, different languages, sorry. So it's not unknown for a person, for example, I've had cases where somebody is speaking fluent Arabic or somebody is speaking fluent uh, Urdu and he's not an Urdu speaker. Somebody is speaking fluent English and, you know, they are from Pakistan and they've just come over to the country, that type of thing. Okay. So, yeah, they do uh, speak different languages. Okay. And um, a group of the Tullab were mentioning about Sheikh Ibn Baz, Ibn Baz, rahimahullah, that he asked a few of his students about Alistair Crawley. Alistair Crawley was a magician, and when they were amazed, he asked some students from America about Alistair Crawley. Okay, and they uh, asked him, Sheikh, how on earth do you know about Alistair Crawley? And uh, the Sheikh said, I was reciting, I made rukya upon a person, and um, the jinn mentioned this magician's name allah knows best okay what is satanic evil eye um wallahi i don't know about satanic evil eye i know about the evil eye but i don't know what satanic evil eye is okay um sister shireen also if it's been confirmed you suffer from jinn possession sihar and strong hasad in your experience iraqi is it normal to feel anxious by the halal uh marriage etc wow okay uh, could this be just mere shaitan and shaitan? So obviously if a person is um, falling into, if a person is possessed and the shaitan are uh, possessing that person and they're falling in love or there's a, a, ma um, a type of magic to block uh, you know, marriage uh, and that type of thing, then yes, thoughts of these things may make a person feel anxious and it's just the shaitan which are uh, doing this. And of course, you know, it's upon that person to make ruqya. What behavior to adopt when the jinns are using our psychological weaknesses? Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ala bi dhikrillahi tatama'innul qulub. Indeed, in the remembrance of Allah, do hearts find rest? Okay, and the Prophet alayhi salam, he told us about the heart. Okay, that indeed in the in the body there is a morsel of the in of flesh. Ida salahat salah al jasadu kullu, wa ida fasadat fasad al jasadu kullu, ala wa hi al qalb. That if Indeed, in the body, there is a morsel of flesh, okay? If it becomes rectified, the whole body becomes rectified. If it becomes corrupted, then the whole body becomes corrupted, okay? So, he said, indeed, that is the heart. And Allah is telling you, in the remembrance of Allah, do hearts find rest. So, it's really important that we look at our hearts. These are the sources. These, this is the source of our actions, the uh, impetus and the motivation to do things and that type of thing. So many a time, a person is distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not all the time, okay? Many a time, that is the uh, situation, okay? So when they're using your psychological weaknesses, then it's upon you to, uh, you know, use their, their tools against them. So if they're trying to make you despair of the mercy of Allah, then you need to read the statement of Allah uh, say, O oh my slaves, those who have transgressed against their own souls, don't give up hope of the mercy of Allah. Inna Allah jami'a. Indeed, Allah forgives all sins, He is of forgiving most merciful, etc. So, if they make you despair of the mercy of Allah, then read the book of Allah. If they make you feel that you are not beautiful or whatever the situation is, then, you know, especially if you're a sister, then you need to know that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't look at your face or your clothes. He looks rather at that which is within the hearts, as the Prophet alayhi salatu salam told us. Okay, so, inna akramakum indallahi atqaakum, that the best of you in the sight of Allah are those who are most uh, fearing of him, the most aware of him. Okay. Um, moving forward, feeling shaking and heartbeat in the whole body, is it a sign of evil? I, um, wallahi, I don't know if that is in and of itself a size, a, a sign of evil. I, okay, um, right, let's see. Uh, somebody said, um, what does seeing dreams regularly of dogs and snakes biting mean? I do look and there, there are pains and pins and needles, but nothing more apparent than that. My advice to you is just to open Surah Al Baqarah and to recite Surah Al-Baqarah. And if you can recite it uh, once every day, this is great. And if you can't, then do it once every three days, inshaAllah. And see how you feel upon the recitation of Surah Al-Baqarah from beginning to end, okay? A sister is possessed by jinns. She's been doing 
self Rukia, when she listens to Rukia tapes, she gets strong reactions. However, when she is on her period, she has little or no reaction. Does the jinn leave the body when someone, when a girl is on her period? We know that this is a, a period of um, impurity, a time of impurity for the sisters. Okay, so it's really um, important in that particular moment that the sisters, you can still recite from the book of Allah and Allah knows best as long as you don't touch it. And at the same time, you should be, you know, making your adhkar and making those du'as to protect yourself from the sunnah. Okay, so um, is it, does it leave the body when a person, does the jinn leave the body when someone is on her period? No, the jinn doesn't leave the body from what I know and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Is it better to give da'wah to the jinn or to burn it to begin with? Don't speak with it, don't give it da'wah. If it claims it wants to become a Muslim and leave, then say, look, bismillah, leave. And you know, you can take the shahada, but don't think that you are the zakir naik of the jinn world because you're not, okay? And in reality, it might just be a shaitan which is playing you for a fool. And the more time you spend giving da'wah, the less time that you are making uh, ruqya, the more time that the jinn is recovering and um, and you know, you're know you really the one that they're going to be making a fool of. So don't spend ages giving da'wah and speaking to them and that type of thing. Just tell them to leave. Bismillah and carry on with your recitation. Is sleep paralysis jinn and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best? I'm not saying it is jinn and I'm not saying it isn't jinn. However, it seems... Odd that when a person makes dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, the sleep paralysis ends. I find that odd, but I'm not saying that it is, or I'm not saying that it isn't. Okay? Are spirits of the dead linked to the jinn? There is no such thing as spirits of the dead. Allah says, when a person dies, وَمِنْ وَرَائِهِمْ بَرْزَخٌ إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ That behind them there is a barrier until the day that they are resurrected. Once a person dies, his soul isn't coming back. It's not spirits of the dead and Ouija boards and all that rubbish. You're actually just contacting the jinn. Okay? Um, can severe depression be caused due to evil eye or black magic if apparently everything is going perfectly in one's life? Um, you know, if everything's going perfectly in one's life and that type of thing, maybe you have the evil eye. Go to my website and read the signs and symptoms and watch the lectures on evil eye. Inshallah, you might find um, something which benefits you there. How to destroy jinn who are in love with someone and refuse to leave the body. Now, this is a common one. You know, it's like a Bollywood movie. I love her and I'm never going to leave her. She's my wife and, you know, we're together and we're married and all of that rubbish. Okay, just don't talk to it, just recite from the book of Allah, focus on the ayat which I mentioned in the Sunnah, Surah Al-Fatiha, Ayat Al-Kursi, Ikhlas Falaq Nas, Surah Al-Baqarah, the last two ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah, those types of ayat, just focus on those ayat and just you just practice your tajweed, you just practice your recitation and the jinn will die in good time by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Would listening to Quran, especially Surah Al-Baqarah, help for Rukya and also as a protection while we are asleep at night? No. Surah Al-Baqarah, an audio recording, is not sufficient to protect you, nor your home, nor is listening to Ayat Al-Kursi going to benefit you. It must be recited. Okay, Whoever recites Surah Al-Baqarah in his home, he's going to get this. Whoever recites Ayat Al-Kursi, X, Y, and Z. It's nothing to do with listening. Okay? If, however, somebody is a reaver and they've just entered into the religion and they don't even know Alif Bata, then what do we say to them? Recite Surah Al-Baqarah? No. In that situation, you know, um, get them to listen to it. And inshallah, it will benefit them. But in the meantime, they must be learning how to recite. So uh, listening is not going to benefit you. It needs to be recited. Okay? Um, how to deal with a person who doesn't want uh, pay people to form Rukya on him? What other options are available? Okay, so you need to know that if asking for Rukya, this is something which takes you out the fold of the 70,000. Asking for Rukya is something which takes you out the fold of the 70,000. Okay, the Prophet alayhi salatu salam, he told us there are 70,000 from my ummah and they will enter into Jannah bi ghayri hisab uh, without any accountability, who are they? They are the ones who don't seek ruqya, nor do they believe in omens, and in another narration, nor do they have cauterization, and they put their trust 
in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Jibreel made Rukya on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What do we understand from this? Okay, that if somebody comes to you and says, I want to make Rukya on you, then you shouldn't stop him. The Sunnah is to allow him to continue. You never asked for it. You won't be out of the 70,000 insha'Allah. Okay, but asking for it, this is something which takes you out of the 70,000. So that person, he needs to know, he needs to know that, um, at, you know, as long as he doesn't ask, if somebody comes and says, look, you don't look too well, I want to recite on you, then he shouldn't stop them. And this is what Shaykh Ibn Uthaymeen, rahimahullah, mentions. Uh, does Rukia work in a house where there is music played on TV, ill speeches used, and um, there is uh, a lot of innovation going on? Okay, if you're living at home and your parents are uh, engaged in innovation and they're watching their Indian dramas, Star Plus, ARY, whatever, you have, you are accountable for that which is within your ability. You have control of that which is within your ability. Okay, so, you know, if you are in your room and they're doing something downstairs, but you don't have the ability to stop it, especially if you're a sister, then in that situation, Allah Jalla wa ala will not hold you accountable for their issues. And insha'Allah, your ruqya will be successful. Fattakullah mastata'atum. Fear Allah to the best of your ability. What to do about paranormal activity in the house when all other criteria being done, such as reading Surah Al-Baqarah, spraying the house with, uh, you know, uh, water that has been recited upon, etc., etc. Okay? Uh, bed shaking at night, feeling of being touched. In that situation, you need to make ruqya on yourself and you need to make it with an intention of making ruqya because the issue, as I always say, is not with the house. Very rarely is it with the house. You may move into a, a, a house which is haunted in inverted commas by jinn, but that's rare. Usually it's with the people who are living in the house. And so if you went and lived in a cave, you'd still get the issues, you'd still get problems, okay? So make ruqya upon yourself. Okay, me personally, once I experienced sleep paralysis, I read Ayatul Kursi and immediately felt fine, and that's what I mean. Okay, so it's is it I I I I can't make the link other than when a person recites uh, and he begins to recite, he mentions Allah Ayatul Kursi, he sleeps with the uh, doing the things from the Sunnah, then suddenly sleep paralysis stops. But I cannot say for sure. Okay. How to know if mental crisis on a practicing Muslim is about jinn possession or mental problem when medical scans find nothing wrong? What we need to know is that mental illness exists. Okay, Mental illness exists, mental issues they exist and at the same time jinn possession and sihar and stuff like that they often share many of the same signs and many of the same symptoms. So there is no harm in seeing uh, and, and going for counselling and going to the medical practitioner whilst at the same time making ruqya, there's no harm. And at the same time, there is no harm in making ruqya first. And if that doesn't benefit you and you don't see a major change or you don't see any benefit, you don't see reactions, you don't see any, uh, any change in state, then you can go down the medical route because the medical route has side effects. Okay, They're going to give you antidepressants, they're going to give you things which are going to sedate your brain. So that has side effects, but the book of Allah has no side mm -hmm. effects. So that's why I always say to people, go down the correct route first. Okay? Um, are all black dogs a shaitan? Plenty of people own them. Also, advice to Muslims who keep a guard dog. Okay? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said that the black dog is a shaitan. Okay, I don't know if all of them are or if it's part of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And you know, to the people who keep little poodles in their house or they keep little poodles outside and they say this is for, uh, this is for uh, protection. Get real, ikhwani. Uh, you know, what, what are you, what are your, what are you, what's your little rat with a, a long tail? What's that going to protect you from? So don't follow your whims and don't follow your desires, okay? It's upon you to keep to the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa With regards to Muslims who keep a guard dog, then inshallah, um, you know, that, that's not going to stop the angels from coming to you, nor is it going to um, prevent you from uh, losing the, uh, the, the weight of Mount Uhud in, goal, uh, in, in terms of uh, good deeds, which is what the Messenger alayhi salam, said, that the person who keeps a dog, then he is going to lose every day that he has that dog, the size of Mount Uhud in terms of good deeds. Oh, Kamaqal sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
What if I can't stop staring in the mirror even when I don't want to and try to look away? Is this a sign of possession or a sign of self-obsession? Take less selfies, um, get off social media, um, make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beautifies your interior as he has beautified your exterior. Make ruqya and then leave the rest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Does the person's qareen die? I don't know. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best except that he says كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانْ وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ Regards to the earth, everything that is upon it is going to die and the face of your Lord is going to remain subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they will die. As for when? Do they die straight away? Do they die some time after, some time before? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Does Surah Al-Baqarah need to be recited in full for the three days protection? Yes, Surah Al-Baqarah needs to be recited in full. Who The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever recites Surah Al-Baqarah in the morning, that in the night time or in the morning, then the shaitan will not, be, will not enter his house for three days. Whoever recites it at night, then the shaitan will enter his house for three nights. O kama qal sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What is the best protection for evil eye? Uh, for the person who gets afflicted often and is already reciting the morning and the evening at kar wallahi in my opinion the best the best protection for this person is to not think about it because when you think about it and it's constantly on your mind and you're constantly worried i'm going to get the evil eye that person's complimented me evil eye etc 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 khalas allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when you when you when you take an affair and you've taken the means fatawakkal 'ala allah Put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't worry about it, okay? Don't worry about it. But at the same time, don't leave yourself open. You know, if you've got a nice car, don't be showing it off too much, that type of thing. Don't be putting it all over social media. You need to know that there is a weakness here. And at the same time, put your trust in Allah. Don't worry about it. Do your best, inshallah. Does a person miss the opportunity of being amongst the 70,000 if someone they know suggests them to see a particular raqi? If somebody suggests something to you, then no, you're not accountable to, uh, for that. Is bipolar linked to possession? And also, what about autism? I've written about autism and, um, and, and illnesses that science, is, science so-called says are, um, are, are, are incurable. So I've spoken about that. That's on my website. You can go and read that. As for bipolar, then we need to look into it in more detail. Why is it that a person has two personalities like this one second and then like that the next second? Would reciting on them make any uh, have any harm? Then of course, no it wouldn't. So let's recite on them inshallah. Are there any obvious signs that the jinn has died or one is no longer affected with affliction or magic, of magic possession? If there are no longer any reactions to Quran recitation, can the jinn hide? Uh, oops, I hope I didn't block you. Can the jinn hide? or become immune no the jinn will not become immune to the words of allah and no it can't hide forever so when i think that a person is okay when i'm getting a feeling that you're okay now then what i would say to them is carry on for six months and make rukya every single day for six months if after six months you've had no reaction carry on for another three months inshallah so nine months of constant rukya from the point that you think that person is okay nine months you let them carry on and after nine months, inshallah, look, if there's no reaction after nine months, then inshallah, the chances are they are cured by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we see a black dog, what should we do? Well, if it's running at you, then run the other way. But if you, uh, if you see it, then there's no problem, inshallah, just ignore it, let it carry on. Do animals see or detect the jinn? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us that when you see or if you hear the barking of a dog, then you should seek refuge with Allah. And if you hear the crowing of a rooster, then ask Allah for his bounty because the rooster has seen an angel and the dog has seen a shaitan. Likewise, the braying of a donkey, it sees the shaitan. They see what you do not see as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said. Okay? Uh, do jinns too have a different sex okay the jinn said that from us there are those who are muslims and there are those who wrong themselves they have different religions they have different uh, uh any different um you know different understandings they work with the people of innovation just like we have a thing and in fact we have audios uh, where like Sheikh Muqbil in Dammaj, he is addressing uh, the brothers from amongst the jinn 
Okay, please help with this query. If a woman is unable to have relations with her husband because her muscles clench up no matter how hard she tries, does it mean that there is some sort of magic to separate her from her husband? Let's be frank and let's be uh, realistic here. If they are both consenting and they both want it and they are both in that situation, but every single time something has happened, then there is a good chance that there is a, uh, a serious issue here and she doesn't have a history of sexual abuse or rape or anything like that because, of course, those previous um, experiences, they may affect her, her current situation. So if she doesn't have any of these problems and yet still, and she, she, she is wanting it, etc., and then that happens every single time, then there's usually going to be uh, other signs and symptoms, but I would definitely say to her, make ruqya upon yourself. Can sihr be inherited and passed through to unborn baby? Yes, there is a type of magic which it passes from the mother to the child. Okay, and so whenever a child has issues, the first thing that I advise is make rukya on his mom. Okay, um, are there any physical signs if and when jinn leave children? Could a parent feel it, a strong force, for example? Um, I don't know with regards to feeling a strong force or anything like that. Um, Allah knows best. Allah knows best. If you're reciting Surah Al-Baqarah whilst traveling, i.e. half on travel, at, half on travel, half at home, do you still have the same protection? Uh, I don't know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Can Rukia be done on pets kept at home? Why you'd want to recite on a cat is beyond me or your pet lizard or your pet snake is absolutely beyond me. You make Rukia over yourself and your family members, inshaAllah. We don't find the messenger of Allah making Rukia on animals and Allah knows best. How should one recite over somebody? Just recite so they can hear or recite and blow on them. I have many videos on how to make ruqya over somebody. So please go and refer to those videos. Barakallahu feekum. How do you explain to a non-Muslim when they say they have seen their dead relatives in their house? Is that the jinn tricking them? Or could it be the dead person's green jinn messing around with them? It could be uh, either of them. It could be either of them. Okay, and so, uh, you know, you could try and explain that. You've got the, uh, you've got the issue there. Can I recite Surah Al-Baqarah over a period of three days for protection or do I have to finish it in one go? It's a good question and it does seem that, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, that if, you're, if you complete it within three days, you will have protection for those three days. But if, but the second that, you know, it clocks over onto the next day, you need to start again. So if, as long as you're reciting portions of it with the intention of finishing it in one go within three days, then it does seem, and Allah knows best, that you will have that protection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. How do you guide someone who's been affected by sihr uh, and would take all the means necessary to get cured despite your best efforts in getting them cured through Quran and the Sunnah? I don't understand that question. Do you mean they take all the haram means? So the Messenger alayhi salatu salam, he said, cure your ill, but don't cure your ill with that which is haram. Okay, so we need to take a, we need to take the halal ways. And the Prophet alayhi salam said, ma anzalallahu da'an illa anzalallahu shifa. Allah has not sent down an illness except that he has sent with it. It's cure. Okay, and another narration, it's known to some and it's unknown to others. Okay, some know it and others are ignorant of it. Okay, so you know that there's a cure out there. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ That we send down of this Qur'an, that which is a healing and a mercy for the believers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ O mankind, there has come to you, from you, there has come from your Lord, that which is a, uh, a reminder and a, a uh, maw'idah. Uh, and a rahmatan lil mu'mineen and it is a mercy for the believers qul huwa lil ladina amanu hudan wa shifa say it is for those who believe a, uh, a a guidance and a healing as well so in the book of allah we have healing okay and very i have various talks about ruqya and the healing within the quran so go and uh, refer to those insha allah could seeing certain people in dreams be a sign or indication that they may have given uh, ayn, hasad, or even done magic. Or it could be whispering from the shaitan who is trying to split your uh, family apart or split your uh, friendship apart or split your community apart, your marriage apart, etc. Okay, so always uh, be wise because he is very clever. Allahi alayhi. Uh, right, would you recommend learning Rukya from brother Iqbal Salafi? If you understand the Arabic language, the, uh, sorry, the, the Urdu language, then go ahead, inshallah. 
Um, doing ruqya of a brother who has blood cancer, it looks like evil eye. What is the um, what is the best ruqya for this case? Um, if a person has evil eye, then the best ruqya in, in this brother's case in particular, I would go and I would put my hand on his head if you have the ability uh, and start by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make sure you are... Uh, you know, you are completely sincere for the sake of Allah. And then I would start by reciting uh, Surah Al-Fatiha. I would then recite Ayat Al-Kursi. I would then recite the last two from Surah Al-Baqarah. I would then recite uh, Al-Ikhlas, Al-Falaq, Al-Nas. And then those um, those adhkar. Uh, for example, you could say, أُعِيذُكَ بِكَلِمَاتِ اللَّهِ التَّامَّ مِن كُلِّ شَيْطَانٍ وَهَامَّ مِن كُلِّ عَيْنٍ لَامَّ There's various, um, بِسْمِ اللَّهِ أَرْقِيكَ مِن كُلِّ شَيْءٍ يُعْذِيكَ uh, the other du'as, As'alullah al-Azim, Rabb al-Arsh al-Azim, etc, etc. Okay, Allahumma Rabb al-Nas, Adhib al-Ba'as. Various other du'as, learn them insha'Allah. Go and make ruqya on this brother. Uh, Barakallah feekum, Akhi Muhammad, Hayakallah, wa ahsanallahu ilaykum. Uh, okay, every time I listen to ruqya, my body is shaking, I can feel something is moving. Please advise me what to do. My advice is the same to every single person. Open the book of Allah. Say, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اقرأ Just read. Allah, just recite. Okay? Whenever my mother recites Quran near me, a slightly cold wave of air passes through my body and even if I'm somewhere else and she recites, the same thing happens. Does it indicate any kind of... Does it indicate any kind of possession based on your previous experiences? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I would, if I was in your situation, I would recite myself, recite the same ayat that she is reciting, and see what's going on. See what's going on. Um, people say don't look too much into this subject or talk about it because this attracts jinn. So I wonder what they would say at the fact that Allah subhanahu wa taala has spoken about the jinn in an entire surah and it's named after the jinn. Okay, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes so many mentions of the jinn in the Quran. I wonder what they would say to that. Can psoriasis and bowel palsy be a sign of sihar ayn hasad, especially when the doctors cannot find any cause or reason for such symptoms? Now, this is a good question. Shall I tell you why? Because three months ago, I had, bow I had bowel palsy. Okay, three months ago, I myself had bowel palsy. So, what did I do now? Am I, you know. Uh, what what did I do? So maybe this will be a guidance for you now, inshallah. So I made ruqya over myself. At the same time, I took their steroids. At the same time, I uh, I recited over some olive oil and I took black seed oil. At the same time, I massaged the um, the area. And by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa taala, you get better. So again. Is it now that we're going to say every single thing, you know, the, I, I took both, both approaches. Yeah, I, mean, I took the medical approach and they wanted to put me on more, uh, more steroids. But after the first course, I said, no, I'm not taking any more steroids. Khalas, you've, you've tried your bit. Now let me try my bit. Does that mean I, have, I had hasad? Allah knows best. But the fact of the matter is, I recited from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I made dua to Allah jalla wa ala. This doesn't mean I'm righteous or pious or I'm an awliya. I'm not taking your bay'ah. I don't want your money. I don't want to blow over you. I don't want any of that rubbish. I don't want to blow over your tasbih or any of that, right? But the point being is that we do what is within our ability and we leave the rest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, can I come to one of your ruqya sessions just to see? Um, I'm not making ruqya. I haven't been making ruqya for a while now, actually. Um, and the reason why I stopped making ruqya, ikhwani, was for one of a few reasons. The first reason was due to a lack of time. The second reason was I was becoming a fitna for the people where it was like, no, we have to go to Abu Ibrahim. If we don't go to him, we're not going to anyone. And so I was becoming like Pir Saab. And so I recognized this and I said, you know what? No more. You people recite over yourself. I'm not going to recite something that is going to... I'm not going to recite an ayah or a surah that you don't know. I'm not going to recite uh, a dua that hasn't been uh, collected anywhere. You people recite it on, you, on yourself and people get lazy there. Brother, can you come and check me out, please? Can I just come up for a checkup? What, do you think that I'm a GP? You know, I'm just going to put something over your chest and say, no, everything's fine. Cough. No, this is not how it works. Do it yourself, ikhwani. So in answer to your question, no, you can't come to one of my Rukia sessions. Is autism gin related? I've already spoken about that. Go to my website, inshallah. Is shivering, feeling cold and goosebumps during listening to Quran a sign of possession? 
um, again, it's impossible to say. I would go and I would recite from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and see how you feel. Salamu alaykum wa alaykum salam. I think my whole family is under evil eye and magic. All my family members have done some or the other problem. I am a mom of three kids and I want to pray all the time, but I'm not able to do so. Uh, I shiver and feel like fainting every time I stand for prayer. Okay. Um, does anybody here have my Rukya number? Does anybody here have my Rukya number, Ikhwani? If you do, put my Rukya number in the in the comments. So, Sister uh, Um Ahmed, Sister Aisha, get my number from the comments, inshallah, and uh, speak. To, and and so mention it. Please put my number in the comments, and then put it in. And and Sister Aisha, um, you can contact me by WhatsApp, inshallah. Do jinn try to make fights at home? Remember, remember, the Prophet alayhi salatu salam, he told us that Iblis pray, places his throne on the water. And then the shayateen, they come and they tell him, uh, you know, oh, you know, uh, Iblis, today I made a man kill his brother. And he says, yeah, you've done okay. I've done this one. I've done that. I've done that. And then a man, a, a, a shaytan comes and says, I was with a man and I never left his side until I made him divorce his wife. Iblis says, you, 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 come over here. And he brings him close. And he brings him close to himself. Ya'ani, you've separated a man from his wife. You've broken a family apart. So do jinn try to make fights at home? Of course they do. Of course they do. So bear that in mind. Does your protection go away or is it dangerous to perform ruqya when a woman is on her period? Is it dangerous to perform ruqya when you are alone with another person who's possessed as well? Uh, ruqya, when you forget adhkar. As-sabah wal masa dangerous. I wouldn't do ruqya, well, a sister shouldn't do ruqya when she's menstruating, number one. She shouldn't do ruqya when she is, um, you know, she is um, alone with that person. Um, and the third thing is, um, if you haven't made your adhkar, don't make ruqya, subhanAllah. Um, can eating seven ajwa dates every day cure jinn possession? The Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said that whoever eats... Um, uh, seven ajwa dates in the morning then he won't be affected on that day either by magic or by uh, poison yani the sting of an animal so is it just is it for jinn possession the answer is no how do you treat someone who is affected by sihr he keeps getting possessed by the same jinn after many ruqya sessions and there are also new jinns that enter what you'll probably find is that it's the same jinn just fooling you saying we're new we're new we're new we're new we're new that person needs to treat themselves they need to um, they need to take it upon themselves, insha'Allah. I often get sleep paralysis. What is the cause of it? Uh, Ab Abu Nur Abdullah, we have uh, we have dealt with that, insha'Allah. So go back and view that. How to grind seven cedar leaves between stones? Um, why would you do that? Just put it in your uh, just grind it down with that thing, that banging thing. Um, that's my Rukia line. Okay, have you guys got any more questions? Sorry, I was rushing through them because as I was answering, I, I was aware that you guys were putting more and more and more. So to avoid getting snowed under, um, I was firing through those questions and I hope that um, they weren't too quick for you guys, inshallah. Does anybody have any more questions? Um Ahmed, um, WhatsApp me your situation. Okay, seizures caused by the jinn. At the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, there was a um, there was a uh, black lady who used to used to have seizures. Okay, she used to have these epileptic type fits, and so she came to the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and said, "Oh Messenger of Allah, make du'a for me." He said, "If you want, I'll make du'a, but if you are patient, then for you is jannah." So she said, "I'll be patient." I'll be patient. But then she, when she used to have these fits, she'd become uncovered. So she went back to the Prophet ﷺ and said, O Messenger of Allah, just make dua that when I have these seizures, when I have these types of fits, uh, do not, uh, that my, my, my aura doesn't become uncovered. Okay? So seizures and fits, they may be caused by the jinn, but at the same time, it may be a medical, it may be a medical issue. Okay? So please bear that in mind. Make rukya, make rukya. Are you familiar with ticks in the body during Rukya? For example, ticks in the eyelid in the hadith of the women and the Prophet ﷺ, ticks in the leg or the stomach. I'm not 
uh, familiar with that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. How do you protect yourself from the evil eye? You protect yourself by reciting those ad'iyah from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by not showing off, by not putting your pictures all over social media, by not, you know, flaunting the blessings. There's no wrong, there's nothing wrong with speaking about the blessings of Allah jalla wa ala upon you, but don't do it all over social media. And when somebody compliments you, then remind them. Say, you know, barak Allah feek, Allahumma barik, whatever it is. You need to remind them to say those things. Wa jazakumullahu khairah. If you have any questions, yes, you can ask me on WhatsApp. Just don't call me. Okay, don't call me on WhatsApp. Wa alaykum salam. I was worried about my sister and therefore asked this Mawlana and he said he did takbir and event he did he did takbir uh, and eventually told me that she was under a really bad black magic and that it's going to get worse and he said he would give this taweez and I'll be and all I'll be paying for is a red ink that is used to write it. What do you think? Okay, I'm glad you asked this question. Maulana Saab is a fraud. Maulana Saab is a liar. Maulana Saab is calling you to shirk. Maulana Saab is a shaitan. I don't care how big his beard is. I don't care how nice his recitation is. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam listened carefully. said, Man ta'allaqa tamimatan faqad ashrak. Whoever wears an amulet, then he has committed shirk. Okay, 10 men came to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to give him the Pledge of Allegiance. He accepted from nine of them, he didn't accept from one. The man was amazed. Why didn't he accept from me, but he accepted from all of my companions? The Prophet Alaihi Wasallam saw that there was a, a, an amulet. The man was wearing a taweez. So the man took it off and he broke it off and then he offered the pledge and the Messenger of Allah accepted his pledge. Another man, another time, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he um, he saw a man wearing a uh, a brass bangle around his arm. Okay, and the Prophet alayhi salatu salam said, "What is that, uh, 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 waylak? Uh, woe to you! What is that? Why are you wearing it?" The man said, "Oh, Messenger of Allah, I have this illness called al wahina It's like an illness in my bones, and I'm wearing it for that." The Prophet alayhi salam said, "Cast it off. Take it off." And because it can only increase your weakness and were you to die whilst you were wearing it, you would never be successful. So Mawlana Sab, who said he was doing takbir, ask him, did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do takbir in this way? What's your takbir? Did you do, uh, you know, takbir to start the salah? What did you do takbir? Did you do takbir and then take three steps toward, towards Iraq and then two steps toward Baghdad and then one step back? What's your takbir? What's your takbir? Where's this from the sunnah? The next thing, you're going to write me an amulet. Did the Prophet ﷺ ever write an amulet? Did Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali radiallahu anhum, did they ever write an amulet? What's in your amulet, ya Mawlana? And if it's so special, is it going to be more special than the book of Allah? And if it's from the book of Allah, why don't you just tell me what ayah it is and what verse it is and I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go to Google Images, I'll save my money for your fancy red ink, I'll go to Google Images, I'll print it off and I'll tie it up into, a, a, into an amulet and I'll put it around my neck. Fala ilaha illallah. Where, you know, these maulanas are stupid and they are calling the people to shirk and they are calling people to associate partners with Allah. You're going to wear this taweez and it's not going to benefit you, it's going to harm you. And if you die, then you'll never be successful like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told you. So as for Mawlana, tell him for his Qulhatu uh, Burhanakum in Kuntum Sadiqeen. Say, bring your evidence if you are truthful. And if you can't bring your evidence, then you are a liar. Someone, try, someone trying, up, uh, trying their best to wake up for Fajr, even with dozens of alarms aside their ears, but still face fail most of the time. If that person lives, if you live with somebody, أخي, get somebody to come and just drop some water over your face. What about the husband performing ruqya on his wife who's on her period? There's no problem with this, inshallah. My daughter has been pulling her hair out since 10 years and now she's 20 years old and is still pulling her hair. Can you advise if she's afflicted with the jinn? I can't, Akhi Abu Noor. You need to make ruqya over your, uh, your, your daughter. Is there any evidence in the Quran or Sunnah about the effect of using frankincense in improving memory or mind knowledge block? What is the procedure? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to say there isn't. I don't know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. I have seen your video about performing ruqya where you have said that the entire, entire surah, Baqar, surah Al-Baqarah should be recited. I wanted to know if there's just one way of doing ruqya or if there's a shorter ruqya as well. 
then just recite from the um, recite, recite from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recite from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recite if you want to do a short ruqya then recite al-fatiha recite ayatul kursi recite the last two ayat of surah al-baqarah aman al-rasul al-ikhlas al-falaq and surah al-nas hypnotism is performed by causing jinn possession question mark i believe so the legend of daima the council of the uh, senior scholars in saudi arabia they mentioned that yes uh, hypnotism is done in this way if it's not done by actors Allah knows best if they're just actors can you tell us your most difficult experience with a jinn they're all difficult they're just annoying the okay how do you counsel someone who has got who has epileptic seizures to live his daily life with the fact that it can be dangerous if he gets the seizures um, in situations like while he's on the road uh, during work studying etc he's the one whose medical reports show no medical uh, problem Wallahi, I would um, make ruqya. I would make ruqya and be in a constant state of dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you need to know that maybe you are afflicted with something and as a result of this illness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> is expiating your sins. Or Allah is raising your rank in al-jannah. So be patient, akhi. Be patient. And you need to know that innama yuwaffa sabiruna ajrahum bi ghayri hisab. That Indeed, for the people who are patient, they will have their reward without any accountability whatsoever. And in Allah um, sabirin, Allah is with those who are patient. So you need to be patient, deal with this issue, and be patient with this issue. Constantly be making tawbah and istighfar and dhikr of Allah, and at the same time make ruqya akibarak Allah fiq and uh, and have good thoughts and high hopes of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Can urinating frequently be a sign of evil eye? You're drinking too much water. How do you counsel someone who gets... Oh, I've already dealt with that issue. In your diary of Nexus, you spoke about the ongoing patient who sees snakes and all that stuff. Is it still ongoing? I don't remember. I'll be honest. I don't remember. Um, what, are the, what are the signs and symptoms during Rukia? That's one. What are the uh, signs and symptoms... Doing ruqya that a child is afflicted with ayn, hasad or possession or magic, is it different to an adult? It's fairly similar to an adult. I would um, I would um, go to my videos inshallah. Um, whilst making ruqya on people, did the jinn ever threaten you? Yes, all the time. They are they talk a lot. Um, girl is possessed. After some ruqya sessions, her mobile and bag is lost and she sees her mobile when she closes her eyes hanging with a string. Can jinn hide things? And if yes, is it possible to get them back? Yes. I think the question is, can the jinn um, move physical objects? Okay, so like these pair of scissors now. Can the jinn um, have physical interaction with things in our world? The answer is yes. So they can take things and move things and all of that type of stuff. And Allah Jalla wa ala knows best. For Rukya baths, do we have to sit in the bathtub or can we just pour the water using a mug from a bucket? I'm asking that because I don't have a bathtub at my home. Yeah, no problem. Do what is within your ability. Um, I know there is a dua in the sunnah for difficulty to sleep. Is there any specific verse in the Quran for insomnia due to sihr or jinn possession? No, not to my knowledge. Um, what are good ways to remove or let the jinn go down when someone gets an attack? Okay, when you are um, having a, 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 an attack in this way, the worst thing, um, the worst thing that you could um, possibly do is sort of really aggravate it if you're in a public place. The best thing to do is give somebody some space, give them some, um, give them some, uh, some time, and make the adhan. Maybe sprinkle some water, call them back by their name. Eventually, inshallah, they will come around. Sometimes. <clears throat> It doesn't, it doesn't happen straight away, it takes some time. Um, do you have a Facebook page? This is my Facebook page. Um, and also I have the uh, Diaries of uh, an Exorcist page. Diaries of an Exorcist page. Um, it's not due to water, it's, in, it's happening for eight months and there is no medical reason for it. Wallahi, I don't know. I don't know. But you need to make sure that when you do go into the toilet, you uh, say the relevant dua, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-khubthi wal khaba'ith. Um, and when you uh, go in, you quickly do your thing and you quickly leave and you say ghufranak. Okay, so if you're, if you're going to the toilet a lot, just make sure that you're not spending a long time in the toilet 
you know, for each time that you go to urinate. And Allah Jalla wa'ala knows best. Any more questions, Ikhwani? An hour flies. La ilaha illallah. Is OCD related to gym possession? I've mentioned that, Akhi Barakallah Fiqh, in the beginning of this video, uh, I mentioned that. The eye of Fatima, symbols, my parents bought these black from holiday, blah, blah, blah. All of this, Akhi, it takes the ruling <coughs> of an amulet. Okay? All of this takes the ruling of an amulet, right? So, listen, whether you wear a taweez around your neck, whether you wear taweez around your arm, whether the pregnant woman wears it around her waist, and if she's a diobandi, wears it just above that area there, okay? Whether you, uh, you hang the black string off of your car, or you, you believe that that uh, CD with the Quran printed on it is going to protect you, okay? All of this, all of this is from... Uh, Amulets, okay, so like a taweez, an amulet, tamaim, all of this type of thing Anything which is worn or carried or hung seeking protection or to ward off evil All of this comes under the ruling of uh, that type of thing So whether it's the hand of Fatima, you get these uh, Pakistani uncles and they wear these different rings You know, like blue stones and green stones and red stones And they believe each stone has some form of, um, some form of power And each form, you know, one brings like uh, it's health and one brings this one and one's got power and all that rubbish you know it's just a stone which some guys found probably in his local drain he just pulled it out and he's polished it up put it in a ring and now you think that it's got some form of special power you miskeen okay um and if it's during rukya at home but you are not experienced enough so you don't know how to handle the jinn learn inshallah learn there's lots and lots of videos which will teach you how to do it uh wa alaykum as -salam. sister rabia my Number is here amongst the comments. My number is here, uh, so um, you can WhatsApp me, inshallah. Do you do rukya anymore? No, I'm not doing rukya anymore. Um, can you do some lectures in London, inshallah? What is OCD? Uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. We've spoken about it um, earlier in this very uh, video. Uh, I have to destroy or just bin them. Lala, I know it's all wrong. So. The um, the hand of Fatima, just take a hammer and have great, great fun in just smashing it to bits. Yeah, Some of the Salaf, they would say that whoever removes an amulet, whoever removes an amulet from somebody, he gets the reward of freeing a slave from the hellfire. Sorry, he gets the reward of freeing a slave. Why is that? Because they said, when mm -hmm. you remove that amulet off that person, you have removed that slave, you've saved that slave from the fire of hell. Okay? So, inshallah, you'll get the reward, akhi, of freeing a slave when you um, do all of this type of thing. Take great pleasure in smashing that rubbish to bits. It's not the hand of Fatima, nor is it the eye of Fatima, nor is it the taweez of Shams Tabrezi or whatever else, Data Darbar and... Kari Sharif and all this rubbish, just throw it in the bin where it belongs. As advice for Quranic ayat or uh, suwar which are used as decoration, uh, the scholars have mentioned that this is not permissible and it should be taken down. Okay? Uh, can jinn still touch you after you've performed ruqya on yourself? I think what you mean is possession. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. It's not for me to say, no, they can't. You know, it may be, it may be, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Is it okay for decorations? Our scholars have said no, it takes the ruling, it's a, it's a major sin. Because you yourself, you know, let's say I've got a taweez on my, on my wall. You know, like nowadays you see these hippie guys, hippie Muslims, and they're wearing these chains and these bracelets and all that stuff, really camp guys, yeah? They, if, if... You wear that type of thing and you have no belief concerning it whatsoever. You know, it's just, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm cool. Okay, <laughs> let's say you think you're cool. All right. They have said that although you might not believe anything pertaining to this thing, somebody who sees it, he may follow you in that. Okay, so therefore they said it comes from, it's, it, you are doing that which is uh, impermissible. So you need to be very, very careful. It's not okay for uh, decoration in, 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 a, in a summary. For depression, if antidepressants and therapy is not working at all, does this mean it could be black magic or the evil eye? Find out, sister. Recite on yourself. May Allah uh, give you shifa. Are the magic squares in a taweez equivalent to a phone number to the shaitan? Ring them, Akhi, and find out. No. 
Um, you know the magic squares. Um, what Sheikh Adil Ibn Tahir al Muqbil Hafizahullah taught us is that um, these are attributed to Imam al Ghazali and they call them Ghazali's triangle. Ghazali's triangle. And each one of these uh, uh, letters and what each one of these numbers it has a meaning, okay? And it has a meaning. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Uh, okay, I understand destroying amulets. What if it's just stuff that is on sale in shops and not purchased as an amulet? Does it still fall? I think I've explained that that, that is um, not um, that is not permissible uh, to do that. Is it true that it's wrong to kill a jinn as soon as you discover it? How are you going to kill a jinn? Subhanallah. Uh, how are you going to kill a jinn? Subhanallah. Um, what is the best book on Rukya and exorcism? Ya Akhi, Subhanallah, Ma'akum Ashayyukh fi Al Medina, fa Salam, Ya Shaykhana Ahsan. Jazakallah, brother. Is it appropriate to burn a taweez with magic written on it if it is found in the house? Is it appropriate to burn a taweez or first dip it in water till the ink gets erased? So, how to destroy a taweez um, uh, is. Uh, is is a is a uh, a good question is a good question okay in fact going back to the first question because i want to what is the best book on rukya and exorcisms english or arabic okay in the english language honestly allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best um i know we have sword against the jinn and black magic and we have uh, the jinn and human sickness or the jinn and human uh, uh the the jinn and human illness i think it's called wallahi uh, I think that there's big issues in each of those books, okay? There's big issues in each of those books. So I wouldn't go uh, down the route of just saying to you guys, these are the books that I recommend. And that's why I am reading, uh, that's why I'm writing the, the book, inshallah, for this purpose. Because I don't think there's much in the English language. As for in the Arabic language, wallahi, akhi, um, there are some seriously detailed books. There's uh, a book, and I, I haven't, I don't know the names off the top of my head, but one of the shayukh, one of the mashayikh from Jordan, he has, uh, uh, and it's, I think it's Sheikh Musa Nasr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. He's got a book which details 200 signs of the magician. 200 signs of the magician. I have the book, but I don't know the name. Okay, 200 signs of the magician. And then there are other more detailed books which deal with these issues specifically. So, for example... Uh, Ibn Taymiyyah rahimullah, he's, he's mentioned and he's spoken on these issues in his in parts of the Majmul Fatawa and things like this. Um, but wallahi, as I said, you guys have the uh, shuyukh in Al Medina, uh, so go and ask them. Akhi barakallahu feek. Um, is it appropriate to burn a taweez with magic written on it if it's found in the house, or should you first dip it in water till the ink gets erased and burn it thereafter, or just throw the uh, Throw the taweez in the river. How to destroy a taweez? I have, uh, I have uh, on my website how to destroy a taweez. Don't throw it in the river, please. Don't throw it away. There's a proper way to destroy it. What are the benefits of the of reciting the morning and the evening afkar? If one's faith in Allah is staunch, will these protect him from the evil eye and all sorts of black magic? Yes, by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa taala. But at the same time, you need to understand that perhaps you will. Um, be tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So in general yes But in your case I can't say I can't say So um, if you get the book um, The Fortress of a Muslim After each dua There is a mention of its fadl Of its virtues And, and you know what the Prophet alayhi salam said concerning it Go and read that book uh, In fact you can download it onto your phones It's called The Fortress of the Muslim Okay um, Does cup, So does cupping Hijama help with black magic? Yes, insha'Allah. Um, yeah, with regards to uh, thingy, 200 signs, yes, yeah, subhanAllah. And you know, a lot of them are, are, are um, a lot of them are similar, but they, you know, a lot of them talk in uh, a lot of detail. SubhanAllah, Jazakumullah khair, Wafakumullah, Likulli khair, Hayakumullah, Akhi, Ihsan, Wa Baraka Fikum. When will your books be completed? Uh, so the book, inshallah, in the previous video, I was just um, talking about how, um, you know, I was seeking some advice on some of the issues that you think would be beneficial with regards to jinn. It's going to be a long one. It's going to be a long one. So if you're waiting for it, um, 
you know may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy and keep me sincere um, but it's going to be a long one because there's lots of things to cover insha'Allah I've heard a brother say that it's possible to kill the jinn by making a trough cutting line with rukya water or musk and to have arm and leg and bracelets of textile moisturized rukya water that's a, an innovation subhanallah that's an innovation there's no basis for that whatsoever what do you do in a situation uh, when someone has a seizure obviously aside from the medical assistance um, aside what well, sorry obviously aside from medical assistance assuming it might be gin possession but generally what should we recite okay so um, what should we recite when somebody's having a seizure now or a reaction okay Ikhwan, just recite anything from the Book of Allah and the simplest thing is recite Surah Al-Fatiha the simplest thing is recite Surah Al-Fatiha and blow on him so أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين and just recite it and you don't need to recite in a beautified way just recite it because in that situation you you're gonna be panicking okay and it's gonna be very difficult for you to recite in a beautiful way if you can الحمد لله but if you can't just recite whatever comes to your mind okay and then blow on that person إن شاء الله and then you can go to Surah Al Ikhlas Surah Al Falaq and Surah Al Nas and just blow on them إن شاء الله um, what about your book? Uh, uh, I think our subcontinent magicians may have about 700 signs, subhanAllah, 7 million signs, akhi. That's uh, how astray they are. Um, what, about your, what about your book on Aqeedah? When will that be complete? So the book on Aqeedah, alhamdulillah, no, my book on, yeah, I need a book on Aqeedah, but it's not, it's not uh, specifically a book on Aqeedah. The previous book I think you were talking about, um, it's complete, we're just designing the cover uh, for that book, um, inshallah, any day now, the cover will be designed and it will be out soon, inshallah. Do you have any comments on the book, The Exorcist Traditions in Islam by Dr. Bilal Phillips? You know the, that book by Bilal Phillips where he, where he interviews various uh, people who do ruqya, various ruqa, and then he, you know, he just, he doesn't really comment too much on them. And so if a person is, he doesn't have groundings in ruqya, then it's very easy for him to um, it's very very easy for him to become uh, misled. You know, oh, su such and such a person in Saudi Arabia was interviewed by Bilal Phillips. Therefore, you know, it's Saudi Arabia. He must be right. No, Subhanallah. So you know, you find people saying, oh, you know, I I draw a circle on the floor and get the person to sit on the in the circle, and that and that prevents the jinn from escaping, yani leaving and then coming back later. All of this is batil, you know. So. I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, deal with those, that type of thing if you are not grounded and you can sift through the good and the bad, okay? Can a magician gain information about a person with ease or is there protection for a person with high iman? You know, a person who is constantly, uh, you know, obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, following the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu salam, it's not unheard of for those same shayateen who, who went to afflict that person and they went to harm that person it's not unheard of for them to come back to that magician and say, I can't do it. I'm sorry. We can't, we can't get to him. He is protected. He's constantly making adhkar. He's, he's constantly in the dhikr of Allah. We can't get to him. He's protected. He has angels around him. Whatever it is. Okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects the people of Tawheed and the people of Sunnah. Okay? There's a clip, in fact, but it's in the Arabic language. I've got it on WhatsApp. Um, and, you know, subhanallah... Uh, it's an amazing, amazing affair. What are the signs that someone is a victim of black magic used to separate a happily married couple? Go on my website. There's a video dealing with that specifically. Is it permissible to spray, to do ruqya on water and spray in the house? Yes, inshallah. There's no problem with that. Um, I've heard of a lot of people who went to magicians uh, say that he told them to read certain things by facing east and looking out of a window. Have you ever heard of this? You know, they make you do stupid things and they just make a fool out of you. Whether you're looking facing east or you're facing west or you're facing the sky, it doesn't make any difference whatsoever. He is just attaching your heart to these means. He is attaching your heart to these means. Okay? And so it's a way of you and, and detaching your heart from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the people of Tawheed, they try and attach your heart with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The people of misguidance, they try and attach your heart to others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So you'll find a person saying, you know, stand up on one leg, hop three steps forward, then hop three steps back, then say subhanallah ten times, then sit down, then stand up, then do some burpees, then do some press-ups. Yani subhanallah, none of this makes any difference whatsoever. The shayateen are just laughing at you and your lack of iman and your desperation and the fact that you are... You believe that these things which have no basis are going to benefit you. And so looking east and west and all of that is, uh, it's not really here or there. It's, it's just a means to, uh, a way to detract your heart from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do some people ask about the name of a particular person and their mother's name and tell them about the person's past and future? Very good question. Um, again, if you go on my website uh, and you'll find that I ask, I answer a question. Why does Mawlana, why does Mawlana... Um, why does Mawlana ask your name and your mother's name? Okay, many, many of the Sufis, they do this, ask your name and your mother's name. Okay, um, can you find out, so can jinn possession affect your memory? Yes, jinn possession can affect your memory by the permission of Allah. Many people find it difficult to memorize from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they're possessed, but that is not a sign of possession. Okay, you might find that a person is uh, just distant from the book of Allah Your sins are making it difficult for you to memorize the book of Allah That doesn't mean you're possessed But sometimes uh, jinn possession might make it difficult for you Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, can you ever find out with certainty Whether your problems are a test from Allah Or they are a result of evil eye or black magic And the evil eye and the black magic What are they except for a test from Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala The evil eye or the your problems You know Again, all comes back down to open the book of Allah and recite. Every, I don't know how many times you've heard me say this today. Somebody has said, I've got this problem and I've got that problem. How do I know what's wrong with me? I said recite. Somebody comes and he says, I've got this issue, but I might have that issue, but all the medical records are okay. I said recite. Somebody comes and says, how do we know whether it's a test or a punishment? I said recite. How do we know... Uh, if there is there a cure for X, Y, and Z? I said recite. The the end thing, and it boils down to it every single time, is recite. Open the book of Allah. You open the book of Allah. You trust and rely on Allah. You connect your heart to Allah. You call upon Allah directly without any intermediaries. You come to Allah with pure tawheed. And then recite. And then recite. Khalas. Just recite. Subhanallah. Just relax. Just recite. Uh, if you know somebody who is possessed, should you keep away from them, relatives, friends, work, colleagues? No, don't worry about it. If somebody's possessed, you know this person's possessed, before you go and see them, just say, A'udhu bi kalimatillahi tammati min sharri ma khalaq. A'udhu bi kalimatillahi tammati min sharri ma khalaq. A'udhu bi kalimatillahi tammati min sharri ma khalaq. Okay? I seek refuge with Allah. I seek refuge with the perfect words of Allah from the evil of that which is created. Khalas. You say that three times, you're protected until you leave that place. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, don't imagine if, imagine if we got to a situation where your friend was possessed and we all boycotted him. Khalas, we've left him now. And the, the sheep and the wolf goes for the lone sheep. We need to hold him close. We need to assist him. We need to work with him. We need to help him. The Prophet Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever removes a, be- a believer's difficulty in this world, Allah will remove one of his difficulties on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. So be close with him, inshallah. What to do during Rukia when a jinn says he wants to leave and is trying but can't? A load of rubbish. Most, the majority of the time it's a load of rubbish. Okay? I want to leave but I can't. They've got my family members. They're going to kill me. Etc, etc. And say, look, fine, we're going to kill you as well. So it's up to you. Whether you die at their hands, whether you die at our hands, no problem. At least if you leave, then maybe you'll die doing a good deed. In Africa, some people burn trees because they believe that jinns and witches don't like the smoke or the smell. Is this haram? Okay. The shayateen, ikhwani, they, they love places of filth and smells of filth. So anything which is the opposite of that, they hate. But as for burning a specific tree or burning this or burning that, then it's no different to the people who hang onions on their house because vampires don't like onions apparently. How shall I react if the jinn makes takfir upon me? Ask him where his khalifa is, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. Where's your, where's your ISIS leader gone? Brother, why don't you do ruqya anymore? I've mentioned that. Uh, will there be a recording of this session available? As I missed a few answers in the middle. Yeah, uh, inshallah, I'll, I'll leave it up for a day or two, inshallah. I'll leave it up for a day or two, inshallah. And then you can get to it there. 
wa jazakumullahu khayran. Any more questions, Ikhwani? How can you distinguish between the treatment effects that the jinn is suffering from and the effects of fatigue and tiredness in yourself? Good question. So if a person is making ruqya, if a person is making ruqya, okay, and um, if a person is making ruqya and after the ruqya, directly after the ruqya, when he recites or he makes dhikr, then he feels tired, then he, you know that this is upon the jinn and the jinn is feeling this tiredness and this fatigue. If, however, you slept, you know, you, you were uh, debating all night on Facebook and you slept at 3 a.m., and then you missed your Fajr prayer and you woke up tired and that type of thing, then you've got nobody to blame but yourself. So look at what you were doing before that. Yani if you were reciting from the Book of Allah, making the Ruqya, and then afterwards you feel that fatigue, you know this is the jinn. However, if it's just general, day-to-day, -day, practical things, then you know it's yourself. Okay? Are there any um, specific herbs or plants, Qust al-Hindi, um, there's uh, black musk which some jinn don't like. That's a that's a type of scent. Um, other things that you could use zamzam water. Um, some people use um, cider honey. Other people use uh, what's that called vinegar? What's that vinegar called? Subhanallah. I don't know. That there's a type of vinegar that people use. Um, apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar. Um, you know, there's lots of different things. There's lots of different things. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't know, subhanAllah. Lots of different things. Apple cider, yeah, cider vinegar, I think it's called. So people use lots of different things. But the reality is, the reality is, all of these things, all of these things are just the icing on the cake. Your ruqya should form, your recitation should form 99% of your ruqya. And then the apple cider vinegar and the qust al-hindi and the black seed and the honey and the rukya bath and the rukya face wash and all of that stuff. That should form 1%. You know, I'm always very uh, dubious when somebody comes now and they say, you know, uh, recite for 5 minutes and apply this for 20 minutes. It's like, what's the point? You know, the sunnah is to recite and you are, you're bringing the sunnah down and you're telling the people to do something else. What else do we have? Um, will your books be available to buy from Australia? I hope so, inshallah. Uh, you said earlier that the jinn will leave a person alone if they have angels surrounding them. Do the jinn see the angels? From experience, okay, I'm going to say this. From experience, I don't know if they see them in their true form or what. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. But it does seem that they do. But in what form? Only Allah knows. I don't know, okay? I'll, I'll say that again from experience. We don't have any evidence. Okay. How about black peppercorn and salt? I don't know. Can a jinn make a man commit adultery? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. If a female is performing ruqya upon another female and a non mahram walks in, does the one reciting have to stop reciting? Yes. Okay. So if a woman is making ruqya on another and a non mahram walks in, then you should stop reciting because your voice when you are reciting is aura. Okay. And Allah knows best. Ajwa dates are said to protect from magic. Does this hold true for all kinds of dates? No. And it's a specific kind of ajwa date as well. Okay. It's a specific kind of ajwa date from a specific part of Al Medina, but I'm not quite sure which one that is. But inshallah, any ajwa date should be okay, but it's not true for the other types of dates. Do jinn have different accents depending on where the magic was sent from? Yeah, they talk like me and you. Okay, so you might get a really brummy gin, you might get one that is really, uh, you know, I had one um, and it was, and there was a, a few sisters um, and uh, the gin uh, <laughs> said, um, you know, I invite you to my religion uh, and all sorts. And then there was another gin which said, oh, I don't like his eyes referring to me and, uh, you know, oh, uh, said to my family members, you know, this guy is something he's a magician and all sorts and you know really posh and stuff so yeah you get different gin just different accents just like you get different accents from from the people as well um are we vulnerable when traveling good question good question um the prophet alayhi salatu salam he forbade us from traveling alone and at night 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best if a person is more vulnerable in that situation. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. So I don't know. Um, Any time that we should avoid traveling. Now, we know that at Maghrib time, uh, when the sun is rising and when the sun is setting, that type of thing, the shayateen are spreading out in the land. Um, so be careful with regards to that. Make sure you've done your adhkar. But other than that, inshallah, there's there's no real worries, inshallah. General question regarding going to the masjid. Obviously, there are different mosques which hold different beliefs. So which one is on the correct one to go to and how to choose... Uh, is it go blah blah blah? Okay, let's take that. Let's take that for another time, inshallah. Let's keep it to Rukia because if I answer that, then um, people are going to get upset. So let's keep it to Rukia, inshallah, and we can take that another time. Be idhnillahi tabaraka wa taala. But in in very short, go to those who follow the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salam without blindly following any man after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and the aqidah is correct, um, and they are following the Sunnah. Khalas. Um, if we see if we see a jinn in the dream in our room and it seems like you're awake, is a jinn usually present in the room? Can the jinn take us in a state of trance where it seems like we are not really awake? Um, I don't know, but in that situation, I would get up and I would um, recite loudly um, and uh, and then turn over and go back to sleep. Inshallah. What is the best best place to do? <clears throat> what is the best place to do ruqya? Easy with the hearts. Brothers, easy with the hearts. What is the best place to do Rukia? Is it better to go to his house or to ask him to come to my house? Um, that's up to you. That's up to you, inshallah. Um, if the taweez or the sihr is not found and you constantly follow your Rukia program, do you truly believe other than the will of Allah can the sihr to go or is it stuck there? Look at the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He found the sihar but he didn't take it out. In narrations the well was filled up, the well of Darwan. And he was cured by dua. So you have dua just because you can't find the sihar. Just because you can't find the sihar doesn't mean you're going to be suffering for the rest of your life. Okay? If a person puts an evil eye on another person, what is the process of them being afflicted what has the jinn got to do with this? Okay, um, inshallah, I've got lots of uh, lectures on the evil eye. So uh, go and find those. Was the Prophet ﷺ affected by sihr or by poison? The Prophet ﷺ was uh, affected by uh, sihr, which was done by Labid ibn al-A'asan al-Yahudi, al-Ladi sihr al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, and uh, in other narrations, it's mentioned that a uh, Jewish woman gave him some meat which had poison. Uh, on it and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best uh, how do we understand that our house has bad jinn or zin bad jinn what are the signs um so you know you might uh, you might find that there's knocking and things are going missing and all that but you got to be practical subhanallah be practical and if you fear that there's any issues then just make uh, make the adhan and all that and i have a whole section on my um Rukia on my on my website, how to um, remove jinn from your home by the permission of Allah. Would you advise us to leave recitation of the Quran on twenty four seven in the home? The answer is absolutely not. Allah says when the Quran is recited, then be silent and listen in order that you may obtain mercy. So you shouldn't just leave the Quran on while you're doing your daily duties and you're not listening and you're talking on your phone and you're talking to other people. This is disrespect of the Book of Allah. The Quran is there to be listened to and as a guidance. Okay. So uh, when it's recited, you must listen, and if you're not listening to it, turn it off. Don't don't go out in the morning and leave it on and think that you know you're you're de jinning or you're de magicking your walls or whatever it is. No. Okay. You uh, you need to uh, turn it off and then you can turn it back on when you come home, inshallah. If a married couple are affected with or afflicted with possessions, could it lead one spouse to become oppressive and unjust towards the other? Yes. How many years does it take for a person to heal or cure? How long does he have to hear the ruqya? Any magic that has been done, how long does it take to break off? How long is a piece of string, sister? There is absolutely no uh, one size fit all answer to that. There are million or well, many factors which can affect whether a person uh, is cured or not. Okay, the first thing 
is the person's aqidah. If he has the correct aqidah, then his ruqya will be more effective by the permission of Allah. Then is he following the sunnah? And if he's following the sunnah, then his ruqya will be more effect effective by the permission of Allah. Is he praying five times a day? Yes. Does he pray with khushu? Yes. How much of the sunnah is he following in that regards? Okay. How is his recitation? How is his yaqeen, his certainty when reciting from the book of Allah? How... Uh, what is the quality of his tajweed? Is he reciting with the correct tajweed? Yes. All of these things, they make a big difference and ultimately it comes down to and everything relies on the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if Allah jalla wa ala wills, you may not do any ruqya and you may just ra raise your hands one night and you may cry and you may beg Allah and you're cured. And if Allah wills, you may take all of the means and you're not cured. Okay, so uh, be, you know that that's the the answer to your question, inshallah. If a very religious person goes astray from religion, does that mean jinn possession? No, subhanallah, no. There were people who believed in the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam while he was alive, and then they disbelieved after he died, alayhi salatu wasallam. We find people today who were, you know, very knowledgeable and very religious, and then they go astray and they leave the religion. So be careful of that, okay? And it doesn't mean jinn possession. Please, could you recommend an aqidah book for beginners? Kitab al Tawheed. Out of experience, while performing ruqya upon someone, and I'm physically attacked, and also the jinn tried killing the sister, and I step, I stopped the ruqya due to what was happening, and you haven't performed ruqya upon anyone after this. But after I stopped the jinn tried attacking myself and my family, does the jinn think or sense that I have a fear from performing ruqya after that incident? If you can perform ruqya, then perform ruqya. Um, and, you know, if they see a weakness in you, they're going to try and exploit it. So, uh, don't let them see that weakness. Barakallah feekum. Or if a religious person regular qari reduces the recitation of the Quran and no longer reads as much as they used to, sign a possession or ayin or hasad, there's so many things, you know. He may be suffering from a weakness in iman. Maybe he's taking drugs. Maybe he's watching pornography. Maybe he's listening to music. Maybe he's got a girlfriend. Maybe his iman is falling because he of his sins. Maybe his iman is falling because of a test that he's going through. There are a million and one things and it doesn't always point to ayin or hasad or jinn possession or magic. We have to get away from this mentality this you know this uh this subcontinental mentality that everything is magic everything is ayn everything is jinn possession we've got to move away from that brothers and sisters if it doesn't come with the correct signs and the symptoms and we're not responding to ruqya after that then you know uh, we can't just put it down to all these things is it true the sihar is only destroyed when you find the magic no it it may be destroyed uh, by dua, it may be destroyed by ruqya, it may be destroyed by the will of Allah, Allah just wills it to be destroyed, okay, Allah says he is not asked about what he does but they will be asked about what they do subhanahu wa ta'ala, okay based on your experience, how can someone become a better raqi, what are the prerequisites and what can they uh, and what can they improve, what knowledge do they seek, okay you know, uh, let me make this clear at this stage. I'm very much against, very much against the people, the ruqa who are out there now claiming that they are qualified raqis and that they are competent raqis. I'm very much against this. Okay? The sunnah of the Prophet wasallam is whoever from amongst you can help his brother, let him do so. When somebody comes to me now and says, Oh, I went to a competent Raqi. I say, yeah, so where did he graduate from? Hogwarts? Where did he, where did he graduate from? The, the uh, Oxford School of Rukia? Where did he graduate from? And who said that he is competent? And who, who gauged his competency? Okay? What I'm trying to say to you guys is, I'm not, and this is, as an indirect answer I'm very much against those people Who claim to be uh, who, who claim to be Qualified ruqa Claim to be You know Great in what they do I'm very very much against that Okay But For a person to become A Somebody Or if somebody wants to help others And let's rephrase your question If somebody wants to help others What should he do The first thing is He needs to have knowledge Of the correct aqidah Okay, and he needs to be firm in aqidah, insha'Allah, in terms of his understanding. Because the shayateen, think about it, 
when you are trying to help other people and you're trying to call them to a tawheed you need to know that the shayateen are going to target you with whispers with attacks both physical and mental in terms of deen in terms of temptations they're going to target you allah says wa kadhalika ja'alna li kulli nabiyyin aduwa shayateen al-insi wal jinn and just like this we set up for every single messenger uh, for every single prophet, uh, uh, sorry, for every messenger, an enemy, shayateen from amongst the jinn and also the people. When you're doing the job of the prophets and the messengers, calling the people to tawheed, calling the people to uh, the sunnah, then you need to know you're going to have enemies. You're going to have enemies from the people and you're going to have enemies from the jinn as well. So part of that is you need to know the correct aqidah. Secondly, is you need to be following the sunnah as best as you can. Nobody can encompass the sunnah in totality. We all have weaknesses, we all have shortcomings, we all have sins. Nobody is going to encompass the sunnah in its entirety, but but they should um, they should you know do their they should be doing their best. Okay, that's the second thing. The next thing, Ikhwani, is you need to be praying five times a day. If you're somebody who is missing fajr, you know if the if you can count. Right. If let's say, for example, in the last year, in the last year, okay, if you can't count, let's say on one hand, how many times you've missed Fajr in the last year, if you need two hands or three hands, don't make Rukya. That means you're not firm upon your Salah. Okay, if you're missing Fajr prayer once a month, twice a month, three times a month, four times a month, five times, khalas, you shouldn't be making Rukya because your, your Salah is not upright. You need to be dealing with your prayer before you deal with other people. Deal with your own self, subhanallah. Okay? The next thing after the prayer, your adhkar and the ad'iyah. You need to be firm and upright making your adhkar. Morning and evening, morning and evening without fail. Don't be lackadaisical with regards to your uh, adhkar. You need to be making them morning and evening. Okay? And this is without fail. Okay, likewise after every single prayer you should be making those words of remembrance the dhikr which has been legislated by the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Okay, uh, on top of that ikhwani you shouldn't be somebody who has a haram job, a haram income, that type of thing. You shouldn't be somebody who is you know listening to music and listening and, and you know always watching that which is haram and that type of thing. Look ikhwani people fall short. Nobody is saying to you, you can't you can't recite on others if you you know if you commit sins. You don't have to be perfect, okay? You need to be doing what you can, and when you fall into sins, you need to come back. You need to come back and make tawbah to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, okay? Kullu bani Adam khatta. As the Prophet alayhi salam said, all of the children of Adam they make mistakes, and the best of those who make mistakes are those who make tawbah. So you know you go. And you commit that sin, khalas. If you're a raqi, somebody who does rukya, helping others, you need to be quick to make tawbah. Always turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when making tawbah. Likewise, stick to a framework. Don't try and be a hero and come up with some new way of doing rukya. You know, it's getting boring now, guys. Subhanallah. People are saying I can catch the jinn. Other ones are saying I've got the jinn working with me. Other ones are saying I don't need to recite. I can walk the jinn out of the arm. Other ones are saying, you know, um, I blow in the mouth and the jinn. Lead. It's getting boring. Subhanallah. You know, they, they're looking, okay, how am I going to make a scene? How can I get some attention? I know. I'll think of something new. And so it's getting boring. Keep your ruqya to what is mentioned in the book of Allah and what is mentioned by in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You don't need to be a revolutionary guy. Keep it simple, okay? The shifa is not in your hands and you need to remember these things. Barakallahu feekum. Is it permissible to write Quranic verses on wood, put it in water and then bathe in it as uh, ruqya water? Some of the predecessors, they said this, some of the Salaf said this, likewise some of the Khalaf said this, the more recent people like uh, Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen and the likes, they said write on it with saffron ink and then dissolve it in the water. But we uh, say respecting and loving those scholars, there is no evidence for that whatsoever, therefore it shouldn't be done. Can you recommend a Raqi in the West Midlands area who can assist in doing Rukya for a sister and family? I'm sorry, I can't recommend anybody. Um, how to know if someone is faking jinn possession? I don't know. I don't know, subhanAllah. Um, 
have to be careful. <laughs> this is a public uh, broadcast, so be careful. Uh, when going to the masjid or for Maghrib, Isha or Fajr Salah, would it be better to avoid the alleyways and use the main roads? Yeah, because you, you might come across a thief in the alleyway, so be careful. As for fear of the jinn, no, no problem. Uh, can morning adhkar be recited any time before dhuhr time? Uh, you shouldn't miss Fajr, okay? I said that again. I'm, I'm going to read this again. Can morning adhkar be recited any time before dhuhr time if you miss it after Fajr prayer due to a shortage of time? Why would you have a shortage of time? Why would you have a shortage of time? Why is it that a person possessed makes hand signs? Oh yeah, we find these types of hand signs and we find these types of hand signs, you know, like the Spider-Man when he shoots his web, that all that rubbish. Um, they make this type of hand sign, the one eye, all of that. Um, in reality, you know, does it, does it, are they calling on help? They're not calling on help, they, this is their religion, you know, the the Dajjal and all that jinn, uh, sorry, satanic worship and all of that and you know, I, I enjoy it, you know, they, they go like this and then I used to poke them in their eye through the through the hole and say, yeah, and what? Um, can jinn possess somebody if they used to be involved in riba uh, of any sort in their jahiliya? Riba is a very serious issue um, Riba is a very serious issue um, and, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't say that it would definitely lead to jinn possession, but a person should make rukin, inshallah. Is it true that some jinn live in trees? A lot of reports about affected people hugging trees, sleeping under trees, going to forests. Um, they tend to be under the trees. They, they tend to uh, be underneath the trees. And uh, that's why you shouldn't go to these areas in that type of area, uh, that type of um thing and you shouldn't urinate under trees as well as as well as the fact that we have a prohibition from the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam of doing such a thing what can what can be said of a raki who makes rukia a kind of business okay let's deal with the issue okay what can be said of a raki who makes rukia a kind of a business okay is it permissible to take payment for rukia the answer is yes absolutely i'll say that again is it permissible to take payment for Rukya? The answer is yes. It is permissible to take payment for Rukya. Those companions, when they made Rukya on the man who was stung, and they recited Surah Al-Fatiha, they took a payment, and the Prophet ﷺ approved that, and he took some of the sheep as well. Okay, So it's absolutely permissible. The Messenger ﷺ said, the best thing that you receive payment for is the Book of Allah. Okay, So it's permissible, right? But is it permissible to say to somebody now, um, I'm going to charge you £500 or £300 and I'm going to come and I'm going to X, Y and Z. Let me be real with you guys. Let me be real with you guys. The majority of people doing Rukia now in the UK, and I only speak about the UK. The majority of people doing Rukia now, they used to have other jobs. But those jobs didn't pay them as well as Rukia. And when they realized the, the need for Rukia, they decided to become Mr. Raki. And when they became Mr. Raki, they realized, actually, I can charge basically whatever I like. Okay? And so I know people who only yesterday were starting up as people doing Rukia and now they're specialists in Rukia charging £600, £500. I'll come from here to there, two hours journey, right? I want £500. And you say, you know what? A doctor who is dealing with, you know, who had to study for years and years and years and years and years and years and years and, years and, years and you know, he has all this specialist knowledge, he doesn't get paid what you get paid. And you're coming and you're reciting from the book of Allah, something that I can do myself, something that my family members can do, making it look like some form of special knowledge and then charging so much money and then telling me I need to block book sessions, I need to book five sessions in a row and you need payment up front. These people are just businessmen. These people are just businessmen. And if you sat one of them down and you tested him on the book of Allah and you tested him on the sunnah and you asked him questions about Rukia and you asked him about questions about the conditions of Rukia and you asked him questions about Aqeedah, they are jahil of these things. But you know what? There's a need and they've spotted the need and they're filling that niche because they're businessmen. Okay? So, is it permissible to charge for Rukia? Yes. But how much should you charge Ikhwani? Now, you know what? It makes me sick 
to my stomach when somebody comes to me and says he wanted a hundred pound a session, he wanted eighty pounds a session, he wanted sixty pounds a session. These people, in my opinion, are going to be held questioned. They're going to be questioned by Allah on Yom Al Qiyamah as to why they they charge so much money such that they made ruqya inaccessible to the general person so the general person when he wanted to seek the correct ruqya these people they wanted to just suck him dry and as a result he went to Pir Saab who charged him a one-off fee of 40 quid for a taweez and that's it khalas Bob's your uncle and yet we have priced them out of the sunnah we have priced them out of tawheed we have priced them out of doing this and they and they bring you know rukya centers and they advertise their services and you know subhanallah if it's not a business what else is it if it's not a business what else is it ikhwani we need to fear allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to this okay uh, if someone stopped praying and came back but feels upset or annoyed after the prayer I don't know what you want me to say. Just make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the best way to keep our intentions pure when we do public acts of worship such as ruqya, salah, etc.? Ruqya is not a public act of worship. Akhi barakallahu feekum. No one's saying to you film it. If what you mean is that there's other people around, then the best thing and something that Iqbal Salafi taught me, he said put, your, put yourself in the, in the suffering person's shoes. Okay? So the person who's suffering... Put yourself in his shoes. Put yourself in his shoes and and empathize with the guy. Empathize. Feel his pain. That's your brother. That's your sister. Feel his pain. When you feel his pain, then use that and then become uh, and use that and, and and conjure up your sincerity in that way. I read on Islam Q that morning adhkar can be recited before the Dhuhr prayer. Is it best to recite after Fajr? Of course, it's best to recite after Fajr. Um, you shouldn't be missing the Fajr prayer, but if you are, as soon as you wake up, go and pray and then make your adhkar. Araki said to me, if the ruqya is performed three times, uh, the patient will be healed. Is that correct? Um, ask him. Ask him. Does he have a revelation from Allah? Is he controlling the shifa of Allah? Who told him that if it's done three times, then, um, then he will be healed? This is a load of rubbish. This is a load of rubbish. What is the best way to deal with constant waswasa? I've, I think I've dealt, I've dealt with this. Uh, well, again, it's on my website. Go to rukya-qa.co.uk. The frequently asked questions. You'll find that answer there, inshallah. People have got rukya videos on the net. Can watching all that bring harm to the viewer? Um, I am very much, very, very much against people making rukya on somebody, filming it, and then putting it on the internet. And I've dealt with that issue on my diaries of, the, of an exorcist page. As to why I'm against that, and I've mentioned quite a few uh, points, about 15 points, as to why that shouldn't be done. As for can watching it bring harm to the viewer, if you start feeling scared and you start feeling jittery and shuddery, then the shaitan and the shayateen are going to whisper, they're going to take advantage of that. I don't see any benefit in watching these things in reality. What should a person do if they have a feeling of throwing up during rukya, but it doesn't come out? Then it may be that they have ingested. Um, it may be that they have ingested sihar. So in that situation, they should they should have senna uh, senna tea, uh, and have that with the intention of um, have uh, you know uh, with the intention of throwing up or um, uh, through the other way through the toilet, getting rid of the sihar by the permission of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Anything else, if one it's really late now, so. Um, we'll just take two or three more questions, insha'Allah. Any more questions, Ikhwani? Is black vomit or clear white vomit an indication of ingested sihar? I don't know. I don't know. Can black magic backfire to another person? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. So sometimes I used to, well, I used to come across cases where women used to do magic on their husbands. Women used to do magic on their husbands to make them love them. You know how desperate is that woman? She has sold her akhira. Allah says, "Well, an evil price it is for that which they have sold their souls in, if only they knew." Okay, so. They did magic on their husbands and that type of thing. And then their husbands would end up getting 
you know, disabled and their husbands would end up getting seriously ill and that type of thing. So not only did they lose their their deen and their akhirah, they also left lost that person who they were doing the magic upon, doing it out of his love or whatever else. Allah punished them by that person. So sometimes, yeah, it can backfire. How to perform ruqya if a person feels that their infertility is due to magic, if all the medical tests are normal. Just the standard ruqya ayat. Um, just the standard Rukya Ayat and um, yeah, just the standard Rukya Ayat, inshallah. Just the standard Rukya Ayat, and you can find that on my website. The hadith about covering the water skin after Maghrib applies to other times as well, uh, and to regular gas glasses. Yeah, inshallah. Look, if you want to cover it, no problem. Be uh, Do you recommend hijama? It's not about me recommending it, sister. Um, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he told us that. Uh, you know the cuts of the the hijam, the person who's doing the cut, the cupping, they have shifa within them by the permission of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Um, what should a person do if you just cry during a rukya session? Did it for four months and cried, still suffering from it? A rukya session, make rukya on yourself. Um, can you talk a bit more about jinns appearing as the dead, or is that something that is not true? Jinn appearing as the dead, you know, the living, they can see the dead in dreams, okay? The living may see the dead in dreams. As for the jinn appearing as the dead, then this is only to mislead you. Maybe the jinn appears as your, uh, as your uncle, as your aunt, and says, oh, you know, I'm in Jannah. Do this thing for me and you will get Jannah. So tries to mislead you. That type of thing is common. But other than that, then then you know, you you maybe you are seeing them in, in the in, in your sleep. Should hijama go side by side with Rukya in case of jinn possession? Yes, the answer is yes, absolutely. It's good to do Rukya and hijama together. Good night, brother Imran. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. During Rukya, some get headaches and pain in their body. Does it mean they have eaten something wrong? What's the pain in the body got to do with eating something wrong? Is it specifically in the stomach, uh, Sister Maryam? Khwani, Sister Maryam, is it something specific to them eating something wrong? Is it, uh, is it specific the pains are in the stomach? No more questions, Ikhwani? I don't think Sister Maryam is there anymore. No more questions, Ikhwani? Tayyib, insha'Allah. Um, is it possible to see... Can you recommend a good book on Tib? What do you mean, like uh, Tib and Nabawi or something like this? Um, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know what you are uh, referring to. Um, can you, sorry, where was it? Uh, jinns appearing as kids, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Yeah, there's no problem with you. Uh, Ibn al-Qayyim has a book on prophetic medicine. There are some things which he mentions about amulets and stuff which is not correct. However, um, it's, a, it's a good book, inshallah, on the whole. So, um, other than that, I don't know. I don't know. Um, can black patches appearing on the skin with no medical reason be an indication of sihr? Um, there are narrations which mention a, a girl had like a, a dot on her head um, and the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that she has been uh, afflicted with an evil eye so make ruqya upon her. Um, so again, make, uh, make ruqya upon yourself insha'Allah. Um, black seeds then, I, I think I, I, on my website I just say seven for the purpose of um, you know the odd numbers and that type of thing and less than that is not really much and more than that is too much so you decide inshallah how you how you feel you decide inshallah how you feel 
Brother Mirza, I have a habit of listening to Rukia while lying on the bed before I go to sleep. I hope this is not a bad habit. Yeah, as long as it doesn't put you to sleep, as long as it's the recitation of the Quran is not, uh, you know, is is not putting you to sleep, then that's fine, inshallah. My wife says she has seen kids running around, going down the stairs. Um, make Rukia on your wife, Akhi. Make Rukia on your wife. Um, Um, listening to Rukia while lying on the bed before going to sleep Is it permissible? I've just said this There's no problem with it As long as it's not putting you to sleep Okay uh, The book Shams al-Ma'arif Is it permissible to learn So that you know how to avoid the magician You know The signs of the magician As I've said They are Um they are there are so many in reality but what you find is that they are variations of a theme they are variations of a theme and i've mentioned some of the major signs of a magician um i wouldn't go into looking into their books and things that speak about them in too much detail simply because this is a knowledge which you shouldn't delve into um, just for the sake of it Just for the sake of it So my advice if you have no need then stay away um, How to find out if someone has done magic on you That's like the, the Subhanallah the million dollar question uh, Go and make rookie on yourself inshallah um, Ikhwani I'm going to have to end it there Because it's getting very very uh, late um, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala That he um, That he protects Myself and yourselves and all of the Muslims from magic and from jinn possession and from the evil eye and from hasad and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he guides the Muslims back to Tawheed and back to the Sunnah because this is where our honor and our Izzah lies I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he protects us from shirk and with from innovation and i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he guides our muslim brothers and our muslim sisters away from these maulanas and these thieves and these sheikhs who are not only robbing them of their money but they are robbing them of their religion in reality as well and i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he allows us to see he allows us to see and he allows us to realize that what we have amongst us in his book and in the sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, in reality is everything that we need and we don't need anything more than what is within our own homes and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that whoever is suffering then he gives them a complete shifa uh, a shifa which does not leave behind any illness or any suffering and for those whom he has decreed that they will suffer and their suffering will continue, I ask Allah that he allows you to suffer or he allows you and us to be patient with that which he is testing us with and ultimately to make it a means of us having our sins forgiven and how having our stations in the akhirah raised and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala counts us amongst the 70,000. With each one of those 70,000, there are 70,000 more and then three handfuls of Allah who will enter into Jannah bi ghayri hisab wa la without any accountability and without any punishment. Ultimately, Ikhwani, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته